Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our city briefing. Today, we're going to hear from public health, from our streets division, and from our water utility, and then I'll be going through a few other news items and uh, some of the upcoming highlights of events and meetings. But as always, we're going to start with Janelle Heinrich, who's the Director of Public Health, Madison Dane County. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor. As always, I'll start with a brief orientation to the latest information on cases and hospitalizations. Unfortunately, the number of people hospitalized with COVID in Dane County hospitals remains above our peak from fall of 2020. Today, there are 197 individuals hospitalized and 37 people in the ICU with COVID. To be clear, this count also includes people with incidental COVID infections who are there for other reasons, as well as those who are there due to COVID. It is our understanding, however, that more folks are hospitalized for COVID than with COVID. Regardless of what definition of this definition, the high level of hospitalizations and the need for additional protocols to care for someone with a COVID diagnosis understandably creates strain on our healthcare system. We see the exhausted healthcare workers taking on extra shifts to cover staffing shortages. We recognize the stress that they are under. Thank you to our healthcare workers during these once again incredibly challenging times. Overall, the seven day average is currently 1,384 cases per day with a 22% positivity rate. Based on our data and the population of Dane County, Roughly one in 20 people in our county have tested positive for COVID in just the past three weeks. We can now report that the overwhelming majority of samples sequenced at this point locally, nationally, statewide, have all been identified as the Omicron variant. One somewhat encouraging trend we have identified, the number of deaths reported in December of 2020 before the wide scale availability of vaccines was far higher than the number of deaths reported in December of 2021. 92 deaths in December of 2020 versus 29 in December of 2021. While all deaths are incredibly tragic, this is just another indicator of vaccination being the best protection we have against severe illness and death. To help put this even further into per perspective, one of our healthcare partners, SSM Health, is now publishing a weekly snapshot of the percentage of their COVID patients in the ICU at St. Mary's Hospital that are unvaccinated and vaccinated. This week, that breakdown was 92% unvaccinated and just 8% vaccinated. You can find those snapshots at SSM Health Wisconsin Facebook page. We are working very hard to continue to make vaccine accessible to anyone who is looking for one. In addition to regular vaccine clinics at our South Madison, East Washington, and the Alliant Energy Center clinics, we have once again launched mobile vaccination clinics, sending our staff out into the community to answer questions and help folks make sure they are up to date on their vaccines. I just wanna say a huge, huge thank you to the more than 15 host sites, local businesses, libraries, and community centers that have generously opened up their spaces to us once again, and others who will be in the future. The mobile clinics are offering first, second, third, or booster doses. There have been some updates recently in terms of recommendations for boosters. So if you have questions, please head to our website, publichealthmdc, dot com slash VAX. There you'll also find a map that details all the locations where you can receive COVID vaccines through Public Health Madison Dane County. As we all know, demand for testing is higher than ever right now. We are dedicated to making sure if you need a test, you have access to one. We have a opened an appointment-based testing clinic at the arena at the Alliant Energy Center in partnership with Accelerated Clinical Labs. I wanna take another moment to thank all the staff and commend them from Accelerated who are currently operating several days ahead of schedule, 
already providing upwards of 1,000 tests per day, which means the total testing capacity in Dane County has increased by 25% in just the past few days. The clinic is currently operating Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., but you do need an appointment. And we're asking you to please register within 72 hours of your appointment. If you arrive at the arena for your appointment with your registration QR code in your hand, you can make it in and out of the clinic in well under five minutes. These tests are free and the staff will test anyone over the age of two. As a reminder, for those of you who are taking home tests, there's a way to report your health, your test results, excuse me, to us. Check out our testing page for the link. As we navigate this latest COVID curveball, there are things you can do to help us all get through this phase of the pandemic, including getting tested if you are sick, staying home if you are feeling unwell, getting boosted, getting vaccinated, and wearing a well-fitting mask. This is a good time to consider upgrading your mask. Cloth mask alone may not be as effective as surgical masks or respirators against this variant. KF94, KF95, and N95 masks are all good options, but it's important to do your research to find masks that are high quality and whichever masks you wear, uh, ensure that it fits tightly around your face. We have seen surges before, none like this one, and we know what we need to do to get to the other side. So please, again, stay home if you are unwell, get tested if you, ne get, if you need to, boosted, wear a well-fitting mask, avoid crowded spaces, wash your hands, and be well. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. I just want to emphasize a few things that Janelle said, uh, because this is so important for our community right now. If you are not yet vaccinated, please make your appointment today. If you're vaccinated but not boosted, please go get that booster. Almost everybody who is vaccinated is eligible. And again, you can check your eligibility on the public health website. It's important to upgrade our masks at this point in time. You'll see today that I'm wearing a KN95 where I used to be wearing cloth masks. Um, and if you are in need of good masks and can't afford to get them for yourself, there are community partners who are handing them out. And Public Health uh, Madison Dane County with thanks to the state is going to be making masks available through our community partners as well. So you should be able to access a high quality mask if you need it. And we really encourage people to take advantage of that. I also wanna emphasize that testing is much more available than it has been. And if you have symptoms, it's important for you to get tested. If you do have symptoms, regardless of whether you've gotten that test yet or not, please stay home. And I'm gonna call again on employers in our community to make that possible for your employees. We do not want people coming into work sick. We want people who are experiencing symptoms, particularly COVID related symptoms, to be able to stay home and not worry about their income. It would be my personal preference if we had required earned sick time. That's not something that's within the city's power to do at this point in time. We've been preempted by the state, but it is possible for employers to uh, be generous and mindful of our collective public health and allow your workers to stay home when they're sick. Finally, if you haven't already, please visit publichealthmdc.com for much more information about vaccinations, testing, and COVID overall. We really need our whole community to continue to pull together to make sure that our hospital systems are not overwhelmed and that each and every one of us is as well as we can be. Thank you. Next, we're gonna hear from our street superintendent, Charlie Romines, to talk to us about winter, which is actually here now. I think last time you were here, Charlie, we, didn't, we weren't quite yet into winter yet, but, uh, but here we are now, and there's some important things for you all to know. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Um, yeah, despite yesterday's near 40 degree sunny day, uh, enjoy that, it will be short lived. We are still not quite halfway through winter. 
So plenty more to come. Um, I wanted to provide uh, a brief reminder on what the city's winter maintenance practices and policies have been. Um, as far as from a policy standpoint, we're coming up on 50 years. Uh, it's been since the mid 70s that we've had kind of this uh, general policy on how we handle winter maintenance to protect our uh, lakes and drinking water in the city. Um, as briefly as I can, we have generally two types of roads that we maintain for winter purposes. We have our salt routes and our non-salt routes. As it so happens, they generally break out about 50-50. We have about 850 lane miles of each type in the city. Those salt routes are the roads that we plow and will salt anytime we get a winter event. Um, we will suspend salting if temperatures drop much below 20 degrees. Uh, we'll switch over to a sand, um, a sand mix and we'll focus on hills, curves and intersections and we will uh, save salting until temperatures improve. Uh, an example of this was our most recent event over New Year's uh, weekend. We had to suspend salting uh, went with sand and until temperatures were uh, improved and then we were able to put down a light salting and plow that off. Um, to be a salt route, um, this has not changed. Uh, it has to be a major or a collector street. Um, it, other thing, factors that are uh, in play are if there's a hospital on that road, uh, police or fire station. Um, also, uh, if it's a, a school or a metro bus route. Uh, metro bus routes, as they change those routes, if the only reason a road is a, a salt route is because of that bus route, that can have a road kind of come on and off uh, the salt route network, and that does happen from time to time. For non-salt route roads, again, roughly half of the city, those are plowed, not salted, anytime we get um, over three inches of snow. Most typically that's considered on one event, but we will, if we get stacking events, let's say we get an inch and a half on a Monday and maybe two inches on a Wednesday, if that is accumulating above three inches, we will consider that when we call a citywide general plow. When we do that, we wait until the storm is at or near its end, so that can affect the timing of how long that snow has been on a residential street. Um, and the reason for that is we, we bring in uh, contractors. We split the city up geographically. Uh, those contractors, we count on them for over 100 of their employees and pieces of equipment. Uh, they go into their assigned areas. We have many, many city employees from streets as well as parks and engineering um, who go into their geographical areas and start plowing. No one is assigned first. No one is assigned last, but there are a lot of variables that can uh, be into play as far as exact timing. Um, so Although that, that has been in place for a very, very, very long time, it is certainly a matter of uh, consternation and questions we get every winter when we get snow, and that's uh, we do our best to explain that, and I appreciate the opportunity to come and do that again. Uh, I would remind everyone that whether I'm putting down salt, whether another municipality is putting down salt, a private contractor, or you on your driveway or sidewalk, the ultimate fate of that salt is in our lakes and drinking water. To find out more on how to do that responsibly, please go to, you can internet search Wisconsin SaltWise and there's a lot of great information there. Also, um, as we move into free, freeze and thaw cycles, as we move through the winter and, and we get longer days, please remember not only to uh, shovel out around fire hydrants for I think reasons that are pretty clear, but don't forget storm drains. Uh, those storm drains, when they get plugged up, uh, will put of water out onto the road that can then freeze and create slick spots, uh, can create very dangerous situations, not to mention in the worst of situations might flood somebody's basement. So please remember to uh, do that. And uh, you're always welcome to reach out to the streets division if you have questions on our uh, salting uh, policies or why a road is or isn't on the salt network. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. There's some good tips uh, as we head into winter. It's important to understand our approach at uh, the Streets Department, and I really appreciate the balanced approach that the Streets Department takes, particularly with making sure that we're using as little salt as possible because of that danger um, to our drinking water and to our lakes. And you're going to hear a little bit more about that now. I'd like to welcome up to the podium for the first time Marcus Pearson from the Water Utility, who's going to be expanding on the question of salt and a few other things from the Water Utility. Come on up. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mayor Satya. Good day, Madisonians. Um, so as, as, our, as our street superintendent mentioned, uh, winter is here um, and there's another cold front ap approaching uh, regardless of uh, how nice it is today. Um, with that said, it is important for home and business owners uh, to act now to protect their water pipes from freezing um, or bursting even. Um, our Madison, inclusive, innovative, and thriving, um, to help our residents thrive, uh, we have a, a few important winter tips here from Madison Water Utility. Um, first, uh, please be sure to double check outdoor hose bibs um, to make sure all hoses are disconnected and faucets are turned off and drained. Uh, this is very important. Also, make sure your basement is properly insulated and check for areas where cold air may be rushing in. Um, leave some heat in unused areas of your home. If you have a, a, you know, any kind of area that you don't commonly use in the winter, um, still keep heat in there at least to 55 degrees. Uh, if you do leave your home for a few days, keep your thermostat at at least 55 degrees um, and open any cabinets where sink plumbing um, is against uh, an outside wall. And I apologize for um, the, the mask here. Uh, Kind of, kind of messing with me. Um, nonetheless, um, ensure that your your, fur, your furnace vents are clear of snow and ice. Um, a clogged furnace can actually uh, cause a backup of toxic carbon monoxide um, in your home, which is obviously not great. Um, and also, be sure, um, just as a as a rule of thumb for your family, be sure to find a master shutoff valve that turns off water to your entire home. Uh, this is important uh, because it's it's uh, this is important because. Uh, Everyone in the household should know where this is, um, just in case a pipe does freeze or burst. Um, th that, that master shutoff would usually be in the basement, and everyone needs to know that uh, to immediately be able to shut that off. Um, if you do discover you have frozen pipes, do not try to thaw it on your own. Uh, please call 266-4661 uh, to speak with water utility staff. Uh, we have operators available 24 hours a day, uh, so if there's ever an emergency, please call 266-4661. Um, also, um, as, as our street uh, superintendent mentioned, um, it is it's very important for us to clear snow from fire hydrants. Madison Water Utility actually cares for over 9,000 fire hydrants in the city. Again, uh, I guess to be specific, 9,009 fire hydrants in the city uh, that, we, that we care for. Uh, if a hydrant is lost or buried in snow, uh, firefighters uh, can actually lose valuable time trying to locate it uh, when they arrive at a fire. That five minutes that they take to try to, you know, shovel out that, that uh, fire hydrant um, could be very critical for um, a building or any other, um, you know, uh, uh, thing that they need to address as far as firefighting goes. Um, also, please do your part um, to help keep this critical part of our water system ready in case of a fire by, uh, again, clearing um, snow from the hydrants near your home. If you are interested um, in, in, the, uh, in, in our Adopt a Fire Hydrant program, uh, please send an email to water at madisonwater.org. Again, if you're interested um, in clearing out the fire hydrants near your neighborhood, um, please, uh, please uh, uh, email water at madisonwater.org. Um, lastly, I did want to mention and kind of expand on what our uh, street superintendent mentioned. Uh, be salt wise. Uh, reduce your winter salt use uh, to help protect our lakes and streams and drinking water. Um, so this cup here, uh, this is an eight ounce cup. Uh, salt in this cup, eight ounces of salt, is enough to treat a 20 foot driveway or 10 sidewalk squares. Just this eight ounces. Nothing more. Um, that should be enough and sufficient to uh, Protect or to, to salt um, that area of a uh, 20 foot driveway or 10 sidewalk or 10 sidewalk squares. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Again, if you have any uh, questions, uh, please contact us at 266 4661 or email water at madisonwater.org. Thank you. Thank you. That cup is a very handy thing, and I think if you want one, you can get one from the water utility. I'm going to steal that one to take home uh, because you, it is really important to know how much salt you need to clear uh, how much of your sidewalk or your driveway. And uh, we should be really monitoring how much salt we're putting down to keep it out of our aquifer, out of our drinking water, uh, so that we can continue to have excellent clean drinking water uh, from the Madison Water Utility. So thank you for that. And your trivia item of the day is the number of hydrants that the water utility <laughs> takes care of. 9,009 to be exact. Uh, all right, I have a few things that I just want to put uh, a highlight um, and then we'll take questions at the end. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that people uh, don't miss our housing forward update. 
Um, last April, I announced the Housing Forward Initiative. It's a plan to address our housing needs in Madison. It includes a number of efforts the city is working on to increase the amount of housing, housing choice, to create more affordable housing, to combat displacement, uh, to help everybody stay in their homes if that's where they want to be, and to expand our efforts to end homelessness. So as we come into the new year, it's a good time to look back on what we accomplished. And so we actually put together an update of Housing Forward uh, as of last month. And I'm happy to say that we implemented 22 actions in 2021, and we have many more underway. This includes adopting multiple changes to our zoning code to make it easier to construct housing. To incre We increased our city investments in affordable housing that are built with tax credits. And in 2021, we built 862 units of affordable housing, and there are another 810 units in the pipeline. We also increased funding for our Housing Forward Competitive Award Program, and this funding supports non-tax credit projects that uh, support home ownership, co-housing, land trust, uh, and other affordable housing developments. We also used federal funding uh, to help prevent evictions and to strengthen tenant protections in subsidized housing. We dramatically expanded shelter options for people experiencing homelessness. And that's just a few of the things that we worked on. You can read the full update in my blog, and I encourage you to do so. It's a really impressive piece of work by city staff. We're not anywhere close to done yet. We still have very serious issues in our housing market, and we need to be increasing the amount of housing we produce and increasing housing choice in our neighborhoods. Um, but it is good to look back on how much we've gotten done um, and start to set some new goals for this new year. I also want to draw your attention to some work that our Department of Civil Rights is doing to maximize opportunities for local businesses and businesses owned by historically marginalized groups to do business with the city and with other governments. There's two events that are coming up. Um, the first is called Demystifying Certification, and this is for minority business owners who are looking to expand the reach of their business to government contracting. Um, this event is January 19th at 4 p.m. on Zoom. Um, and then the second event is a prime contractor and subcontractor networking event. Um, this is for folks uh, particularly who are subcontractors looking to make connections with uh, prime or main contractors and vice versa. Uh, any primes that are looking to diversify their subcontractor mix. Um, come learn about the upcoming projects and build new relationships. This event will be February 24th, also at 4 p.m., also on Zoom. Um, and to find out more about each of them, you can visit our Department of Civil Rights website. It's really important to me that the city is spending its money in a way that reflects our values. And so I hope that local businesses will take advantage of these opportunities to learn uh, more about how to contract with government. But I also hope that everybody who is listening uh, will do your part to support local diverse businesses in our community. Uh, there's lots of ways to buy local, and you can learn more uh, by checking out Dane Buy Local, the Madison Black Chambers Black Business Directory, or the Latino Chambers uh, Business Directory, just as a start. All right, we uh, regularly recognize the award winners of our Team City Awards, and this month we celebrated another 10 outstanding employees that were nominated by coworkers and residents. We also, for the first time, recognized a number of city employees who went above and beyond in their customer service in 2021. Our Team City awardees uh, for this month are Shelby Hainwald and Zeta Ayala in the clerk's office. Steve Winicki and Mary Majeski at the Madison Public Library, Lori Karst and Don Turner at the Fire Department, Chad Norquist and Lisa Lassinger at the Parks Department, Randy Wiesner from Engineering, and Katie Cutler at Fleet Service. And our Team City Customer Service Award recipients are 
Rachel Darkin at Fleet, Christina Powell at Streets, Nikki Perez in the clerk's office, Karen Dane at the water utility, Sarah Scroggins also at the water utility, Renee Jackson at Menona Terrace, Tanya Anderson and Paul O'Leary in IT, Marcy Paulson in the attorney's office, and Michael Benschwagel and C uh, Sean Malloy in traffic engineering. Congratulations to all the winners and thanks for your great work. A uh, couple uh, other things, uh, opportunities for businesses. One is our facade grant program. We recently gave out our 100th facade grant um, here in Madison. This is a great success story of a program. Um, over the life of the program and those 100-ish uh, uh, grants, we've awarded over a million dollars, which has lever leveraged uh, $2.5 million in private investment. This is a program that is about encouraging small businesses to reinvest in their buildings, provides matching grants to restore or beautify storefronts downtown and in neighborhood business districts. It's just one of the many programs that our Office of Business Resources makes available to businesses locally. So I encourage you to check out uh, our Economic Development Division website or go directly to the Office of Business Resources and learn more about this opportunity and others if you're a local business owner. Um, also, um, want to alert folks to some events coming up for the Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, one of the things that the city and the county always do is to uh, hand out our humanitarian award. Um, the city county humanitarian awards honor the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by selecting folks who uh, are doing uh, good work uh, in his uh, honor or memory um, or spirit here in our community. Um, the award winners are selected by the commission and our community members who reflect the values of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So this year we've got a just really outstanding group of awardees. They're each doing really critical work in our community, uh, supporting families, providing needed services, and challenging us to be a better and more equitable city. We're going to present the awards at the annual City County Martin Luther, uh, excuse me, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Observance, which is on Monday the 17th. The program starts at 6 p.m. Due to COVID, unfortunately, it's going to be a virtual event. Um, you can learn more uh, both about this observance and some of the other activities, the dinner um, uh, and the, some of the scholarship work at uh, mlkingcoalition.org. That's mlkingcoalition.org. And I want to thank everybody in the King Coalition for their great work every year uh, putting these events together and, and honoring Dr. King's memory. Uh, finally, community resources. It's still a difficult time for many in our community. If you are in need of help, there's no shame in reaching out. Uh, if you're in need of housing, you can contact the City Housing Helpline. That's at 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help finding a child care provider, you can call a referral specialist from Community Coordinated Child Care at 608-216-7022. Um, to access other services, including uh, emergency food options, but much, much more than that, please call 211. That's the United Way of Dane County at 211, or you can text your zip code to 898-211, and they will get back to you. Many uh, of these resources and more are posted at cityofmadison.com if you click on the community resources link. You can also visit and subscribe to my blog to hear more about the things that I talked about today. That's cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. Last but not least, we have a bunch of upcoming meetings now that we're back into the swing of things. Um, today... At 4.30, the Community Development Authority Board will meet, and at 5, the Equal Opportunities Commission. On Tuesday, the 18th, at 4.30, the Common Council Executive Committee meets, and then at 6.30, the Common Council will meet. On Wednesday, the 19th, at 4.30, the Board of Public Works, at 5, the Economic Development Committee, and at 5.30, the Alcohol License Review Committee. On Monday, the 24th, at 4.30 p.m., the City's Finance Committee will meet, and at 5.30, the Plan Commission meets. On Tuesday, the 25th at 4.30, the Water Utility Board will meet, and at 5.00. On Wednesday, the 26th, 
At 2.30, the Committee on Aging will meet. At 4.30, the Urban Design Commission. At 5, the Transportation Commission. And at 5.30, the Community Services Committee will meet. All of these meetings and more will be virtual. They are available on the city's website. You can see um, agendas, notes from the last meeting, sign up to view the meetings, or to make comment if you would like to. And that is what I have uh, for this week. So let's see if we have questions for anybody. Yeah. Yes, Mayor, we do have one question, and it's for Janelle. All right, Janelle. With the CDC expected to urge everyone to wear high quality masks, is public health going to distribute N95 or KN95 masks like Milwaukee is doing? Yes, as the county executive mentioned on Tuesday, as the mayor mentioned earlier today, um, we plan on starting to, to um, deploy uh, masks out into the community in the next coming days. We should start with um, maybe up to 200,000 masks and then um, we'll make those available. We're also supporting our schools in um, their requests for additional masks um, as those are asked for um, from the state as well. Okay, that's your only question for today. Thank you. So stay tuned on more information about the distribution of masks, but uh, in the interim, the Boys and Girls Club is distributing masks um, and has made that, I think, pretty widely available in the press uh, and on Facebook, so you can check that out. Uh, but as Janelle said, public health is also going to be distributing masks, um, both uh, with the schools and with other community partners. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, and that is it for this week. So thank you all very much. Uh, stay warm, stay safe, stay healthy, get vaccinated and boosted, and get yourself a good mask. Take care, everyone.